morning. And welcome to worship in the churchyard. Yeah. Uh, in the handout, the words of the hymns are there. And so we'll start with playing hymn, no, hymn number 410, Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven. You got my time? <coughs> Is it on? Yeah. The order for Holy Eucharist, right two, begins at page 355 of the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Together, yeah. Almighty God, you all hearts are open, all desires known. And from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. be with you. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord, not to be anxious about earthly things, but to love things heavenly. And even now, while we are placed among things that are passing away, to hold fast to those that shall endure. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the lessons. book of Exodus. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to him, them, if only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out into the wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. <clears throat> then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you. And each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way I will test them, whether they will follow my instructions or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather in other days. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, In the evening you shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt. And in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your complaining against the Lord. <clears throat> for what we are, for what are we, that you complain against us? And Moses said, When the Lord gives you meat to eat in the evening, and you fill of bread in the morning, because the Lord has heard the complaining that you utter against him, what are we? Your complaining is not against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. 
And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked toward the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine, flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's psalm responding at the asterisk. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him. Speak of all his marvelous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Search for the Lord and his strength. Continually seek his face. Remember the marvels he has done, his wonders and the judgment of his mouth. Offspring of Abraham, O offspring of Abraham, his servant, O children of Jacob, his chosen. He let out his people with silver and gold. In all their tribes there was not one that stumbled. Egypt was glad of their going because they were afraid of them. He spread out a cloud for a covering. Fire gave light in the night season. They asked and quails appeared, and he satisfied them with bread from heaven. He opened the rock and water flowed, so the river ran in the dry places. For God remembered his holy word and Abraham his servant. So he led forth his people with gladness, his chosen with shouts of joy. He gave his people the lands of nations, and he took the fruit of the others' toils, that they might keep his statutes and observe his laws. Hallelujah. The second reading is a letter from Paul to the church in Philippi. <clears throat> to, me, living is, to me, living is Christ and dying is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me, and I do not know which I prefer. I am hard pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary for you. Since I am convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with all of you for your progress and joy in faith, so that I may share abundantly in your boasting in Christ Jesus when I come to you again. Only live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whenever I come and see you or am absent and hear about you, I will know that you are standing firm in one spirit striving side by side with one mind for the faith of the gospel and are in no way intimidated by your opponents. For then this is evidence of their destruction, but of your salvation. And this is God's doing, for he has graciously granted you the privilege not only of believing in Christ, but of suffering for him as well. Since you are having the same struggle that you saw I had and now hear that I still have. This is the word of the Lord.
gospel of our Lord, according to Matthew. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said to them, You also go into the vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon and about three, he did the same. And about five o'clock, he went out and found others standing around. And he said to them, Why are you standing here idle all day? And they said to him, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, you also go into the vineyard. <clears throat> when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, Call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner saying, these last worked only one hour and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first and the first will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Today's story from Exodus and Matthew's parable, the workers each have something to tell us about the grace of God, how grace manifests itself in our lives and how we as mere mortals should react to God's grace. Our catechism defines grace as God's favor towards us, unearned and undeserved. By grace, God forgives our sins, enlightens our minds, stirs our heart, and strengthens our wills. The story about the man manna reminds me of one of the lessons read during the great vigil of Easter. It's the story of the 14th chapter of Exodus, which tells of the parting of the sea and the escape of the Israelites from the approaching army of the Pharaoh. It begins this way. As Pharaoh drew near, the Israelites looked back and there were the Egyptians advancing on them. In great fear, the Israelites cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us, bringing us out of Egypt? For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. Now the great vigil is a very solemn service, but I often find myself snickering out loud at how very human the Israelites were, already questioned God's plans for them so soon after he freed them from slavery. And for that matter, how little humanity has changed since then. And they're doing it again today in this lesson. They say, if only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, would we sat by the flashpots and ate our bread, 
For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. So once again, God demonstrates his unlimited grace by doing two things. He provides flocks of quail in the evening for them to have meat. And in the morning, a dew-like substance falls on the ground, which when it dries can be eaten like bread. But there's something unique about that bread. If you read further in the chapter, you'll see that the Lord provides enough manna to fill their stomachs and to satisfy their hunger. Hunger, But when they try to gather more to hoard, it spoils. The lesson, God will provide what you need. Don't be greedy for more. You don't need it. I'll try to remember that next Thanksgiving when I'm offered a second helping of dressing. The parable of the workers gives us another perspective on grace. God doesn't operate under the same economy as we do. He does not offer his love on a first come, first serve basis. His love, after all, is limitless. We will each receive our full allotment of grace no matter when we show and when it will, and it will be all we need. When God has already given us everything, how can we complain when someone else is given everything too? I was sharing my plans to preach on grace with Marnie, and she related a story about the time she taught at a Catholic school in Bisbee, Arizona during our time as a military family. They actually still had several teaching nuns at the time, and they were sharing how excited they were about the deathbed conversion of an older man in the parish. A few very human reaction would be, well, that's hardly fair. He gets to go to heaven when he hasn't even had to work for it. Emperor Constantine thought he had that figured out. Just before his death in May 337, although he had recognized the Christian church as the official state church, he was baptized into Christianity. <clears throat> Up until that time, he had been a catechumen, a student for most of his adult life. He had believed that if we waited to get baptized on his deathbed, he was in less danger of polluting his soul with sin and not getting to heaven. Kind of like somebody saying, save me, Lord, but not yet. The understanding of baptism has undergone some evolution since the fourth century, and we now understand that forgiveness of sin is not a one-time thing. God's grace means he is always forgiving us, there is always enough forgiveness. Baptism simply means that we are placed finally in a position to appreciate and share that forgiveness with our community. And the essential thing about grace is that it is God's to give and he gives it freely. In order for us to obey the law and to be in a right relationship with God, God must step in, God must intervene. And Jesus did that on the cross once and for all. Good open impetuous Peter asks a question we might be too polite to ask. He has just heard Jesus tell the rich young man, if you wish to be perfect, go sell your possessions and give the money to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. He had then told the disciples it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. Matthew tells us when they heard this, they were astounded and asked, then who can be saved? Then Jesus looked at them and said, for mortals, it is impossible. But for God, all things are possible. This led Peter to say, Lord, we have given up everything, riches and all to follow you. What then shall we have? In other words, what's in, it, in this for us, Lord? How do you stand to profit? Where's the payoff? Jesus responds to him with this parable of the workers, forcing us to realize the following. The person who comes late is just as important as the one who comes early. We really do not comprehend the nature of God's unmerited grace. If there is any special playoff for being early to labor in the Lord's field, it is simply the inner satisfaction that we receive from being in God's employ. 
and I might add, the reward of being a community with other believers. But it's not hard to see why this parable is hard, so hard to take for some of us. We are taught to expect to be compensated for what we have done. And it's human nature to be upset when someone else gets what we consider to be something for nothing. But the essential thing about God's grace is that it is God's to give and he gives it freely and he gives it abundantly. You might ask, what is our part in all of this? Our part is to trust and to believe that what God tells us here is true. A story I read somewhere goes like this. A man dies and goes to heaven and St. Peter meets him at the pearly gates. St. Peter says, here's how it works. You need 100 points to make it into heaven. You tell me all the good things you've done and I'll give you a certain number of points for each item, depending on how good it was. When you reach 100 points, you get in. Okay, the man says, I was married to the same woman for 50 years and never cheated on her, even in my heart. That's wonderful, says St. Peter. That's worth three points. He says, well, I attended church all my life and supported its ministry with my tithe the service. Terrific, Saint, says St. Peter. That's certainly worth a point. One point? Well, I started a soup kitchen in my city and worked in a shelter for homeless veterans. Fantastic. That's good for two more points. He says, two points? The man cries, at this rate, the only way to get into heaven is by the grace of God. Bingo. St. Peter smiles. There's your 100 points. Come on in. But let's not let the popular Christian culture tell us that grace is only about us getting into heaven. Somehow for many Christians, the way too many preachers, and way too many preachers, it is heaven that is the goal rather than living now in the kingdom of God that Jesus, after all, brought into the world with his crucifixion and his resurrection. No, an important feature of the grace of God is that it permits us, if we accept it, to be a living, functioning member of the body of Christ and to experience the joy of being a community with one another. God is ready to bestow unlimited grace on each of us whenever we show up. Why put it off? The good news after all is that through the cross, God has intervened. The powers of sin, death, and the law have been broken. Grace puts us in a right relationship with God. Our identity as Christians is not based on the law, but on the gift of the Holy Spirit who has been poured out into our hearts. Grace means that we have peace with God and we have access to God because we have been given a right relationship with him. Early or late, we are just in time. We are, after all, his. Amen. Let us stand and say together the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, all, all things, things seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, the one being with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. 
He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God is a God of tenderness and compassion, slow to anger and rich in mercy, generous and forgiving to all who cry for grace. With confidence, let us turn to our God in prayer, saying, Lord, have mercy. For people throughout the world who are suffering at this very hour from drought and famine, from economic distress and social disruption, from violence and war, and especially the Christians in the Holy Land, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the church throughout the world, that we, together with all our brothers and sisters in Christ, may be effective agents of social transformation and reliable messengers of hope. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our own country, that its wealth and power might become a force for peace rather than conflict, a source of hope rather than discontent an agent of friendship rather than enmity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our own community, and especially for those among us who are dispirited and brokenhearted, who find no hope or meaning or purpose in life, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who are ill or in any kind of need, especially for the repose the soul of Justice Ginsburg, those who died in the fires, the fire survivors and their families, Charlie, Bob, Phil, Donna, Kathleen, Kay, Emerita, Shirley, Anne, Parker Jane, Elisa, Helen, Dick and Pat, Mary Ann, Eli, Cindy, Robert and Bill, as well as for those for whom we now pray silently or loud. That you will shower your grace upon them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For ourselves, that we may have the grace to rejoice with those who rejoice, to weep with those who weep, to grieve for others, others' losses rather than our own, to be quick to forgive and slow to take offense. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord God, in your presence, none of us can boast, and all must ask for mercy. Yet your Son has embraced us and called us to share in his labors for the salvation of every man, woman, and child. Grant us the grace to see what needs to be done and the wisdom and resources to do it. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please be seated. I realize that I've been derelict in not getting out, putting out the uh, special prayers 
Uh, but we can we can at least pray over this prayer shawl that Mary's done for a, for a friend of yours. Mm -hmm. Do you want to give her name? No. No. Okay. All right. For her secret pal. And it's lovely. I won't get it out because of all the issues. May God's grace be upon this shawl, warming, comforting, enfolding, and embracing. May this mantle be a safe haven, a sacred place of security and well-being, sustaining and embracing the good times as well as difficult ones. May the one who receives this shawl be cradled in hope, kept in joy, and graced with peace, and wrapped in love. Amen. Ascribe the Lord the honor to his name, bring offerings, and come into his courts with praise. Ascribe the Lord the honor to his name, bring offerings and come into his courts with praise. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us the new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days, you sent him the incarnate from the Virgin Mary to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. 
In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. And the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks to them, he said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, and we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Blessed Timothy, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now a prayer of spiritual communion for those who are watching the video. In union, O Lord, with the faithful at every altar of your church where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, we desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. We present to you our souls and bodies with the earnest wish that we may always be united to you. And since we cannot now receive you sacramentally, we beseech you to come spiritually into our hearts. We unite ourselves to you and embrace you with all the affections of our souls. Let nothing ever separate you from us. May we live and die in your love. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Now, therefore, let us keep the peace. Hallelujah. The gifts of God from the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Christ, the bread of heaven. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The 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 
the body of Christ, the blood of heaven. Amen. The body of Christ, the blood of heaven. The body of Christ, the blood of heaven. The body of Christ, the blood of heaven. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of the eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. And now the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forevermore. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.